Goketsu, the ninja duo. How have you been? Phoenix Man waves a hand before noticing Sonic standing by. Did you find a new friend? Something tingles in the back of Garo's mind. Something about what Phoenix Man just said. But he can't quite place a finger on it. Meanwhile, the four monsters stare at Phoenix Man, not recognizing him due to his changed form since the Monster Association days. How do you know us? Oh, right, right. My appearance has changed a lot, hasn't it? The bird monster rubs the back of his head. I'm Phoenix Man. Remember, Monster Association Scout? That name does ring a bell. Oh, that's right. Now I remember. Seems you've gone through quite the evolution, haven't you? Indeed I have. While Gale and Phoenix Man chat, Hellfire notices something. What are you doing here with a human? He points at Garo. His name is Garo. I'm sure you've heard of the Hero Hunter by now. That's him. Phoenix Man says and Garo scoffs. I see. Quite the catch. Anywho, what are you four doing here? We are training in order to overcome the creature who destroyed the Monster Association. Phoenix Man whistles. That's a tall order, alright. Seems you could use some extra muscle on the team then. If you believe you are strong enough to help out, be my guest. We'll of course have to test you to see if you're strong enough to fight alongside us. But after that, we'll be glad to accept you into the group. Phoenix Man chuckles. That sounds wonderful. We can build a new monster association ourselves. Yeah, not gonna happen. Garo glares at Phoenix Man. If you think I'll work with any of these second-rate phonies, then you're even more delusional than I thought. I'm out of here. Garo turns and starts walking away, leaving all the monsters confused. Phoenix Man stutters a bit. W wait Garo! See ya! Suddenly, Goketsu appears in front of the Hero Hunter, blocking his path. With his arms crossed and all four of his eyes glaring down at the human. Not so fast. You know where we are now. We can't be sure you won't inform the heroes about our whereabouts. Are you kidding? You know what I've been doing over the last month, don't you? Oh, we are well aware. Since you started hunting, you haven't killed a single hero. You're not really out to get them. And by the way, calling us phonies when you're the only non-monster here? Real ironic. In any case, we can't let you leave. Either you join us, or you die. Hellfire glares at Garo, and Garo glares back. A stare down ensues. Now, now, let's not be hasty. I'm sure we can figure this out. You're the one who brought this human here, Beak Man, or whatever your name is. I suggest you keep your mouth shut. Sonic says, already grasping his blade. He is really not amused at his training being interrupted. And this guy brought them a security risk, who apparently doesn't even finish off his prey. The situation is tense to say the least. With Garu being the way he is and the monsters not trusting him, a battle could break out at any moment. One thing is abundantly clear though. Garu and the monsters will not work together. Phoenix Man has to pick a side. He weighs his options. In the short term, siding with Goketsu's group would be more beneficial, as they have the strength and numbers advantage. But in the long run, Garo's ability to grow stronger with every fight is extremely useful. Phoenix Man plans to use him to grow his own strength. And so the bird monster makes a decision. He walks over to Goketsu and Garo nonchalantly.
Alright, settle down everyone. I'm sure we can. Several swords suddenly surround his neck. Hellfire, Gale and Sonic have all drawn their weapons on the bird monster. Nah, uh, uh Let the hero hunter decide for himself whether he wants to live or die. Phoenix Man gulps before slowly raising his arms into the air, indicating he surrenders. At the same time, Garo takes a fighting stance against Goketsu. Gentlemen, let's not be hasty. I'll back off. Phoenix Man sighs in defeat, before suddenly swinging his wings full force and knocking the three ninjas away from him with a surprise attack. Garo, hold out for a while on your own. I'll come to your aid as soon as I deal with the ninjas. He declares as he spreads out his wings and raises his claws. In response, the three ninjas enter their monster forms and raise their weapons. So, you've chosen to side with a human. Big mistake. Hellfire and Gale burst into action, charging at Phoenix Man head on with their blades ready to slice the monster up. Meanwhile, Sonic jumps into the air and throws a few exploding shuriken at the bird monster to back them up. Phoenix Man ducks to the side to avoid the explosions, but the two charging ninjas take this as an opportunity to swing their swords at him, forcing Phoenix Man to block their blades with his claws. Suddenly, Sonic appears behind him, ready to drive a sword into his back. In response to this, the bird monster suddenly leans backwards and blocks the attack with his beak. He then flaps his wings with all his strength, creating an intense gust of wind which forces the ninjas back a few meters. The monsters all pause for a moment, before all of them suddenly disappear from sight. The four fighters dash around the battlefield, exchanging numerous blows and creating countless afterimages. Over the course of a few seconds, the battlefield becomes blurry as Phoenix Man and the ninjas cover it in afterimages of their battle. Meanwhile, Garo and Goketsu are at a standoff, while the action is going on around them. The tall monster slowly uncrosses his arms. I hear you are a student of the legendary Silver Fang. I am curious to see how you do battle. Don't compare me to the old man. Garo mutters before jumping up at Goketsu and aiming a punch at his face. The monster's eyes easily follow the human's movements, and he sidesteps out of the way of the attack before casually swinging an uppercut at Garo, who is now in midair and unable to dodge. However, the hero hunter is no slouch. He notices the punch incoming and uses one of his arms to redirect it at Goketsu's face. The monster's eyes widen a little, but due to the attack he threw being so casual, he's able to stop his fist inches before it crashes into his face. In that instance, Garo lands back on the forest ground and lunges at Goketsu's legs. Just as he reaches the monster's feet, he suddenly stops all of his momentum and jumps up, aiming to deliver an uppercut to his opponent's chin. At the last moment, Goketsu leans back, avoiding the hit. Straight away, the martial artist swings his head downwards, and his chin crashes into Garo's body, sending him flying to the ground. Thankfully, the hero hunter is able to land on his feet. Instead of backing off, he aims a roundhouse kick at one of Goketsu's legs with the intention of cracking the monster's bone. Goketsu looks at him in slight surprise. The relentlessness of this human is commendable. However, at the last moment, the monster leaps over the kick, easily avoiding it before shooting one of his legs down at Garo, aiming to stomp him. Garo's eyes widen, and he's just barely able to hop back quickly enough to dodge the blow, but the force of it crashing into the ground knocks the human monster back a few meters. Understanding how much trouble he is in, Garo chooses to put some distance between himself and his foe. He tenses up the muscles in his legs before jumping backwards. Suddenly, his back hits a wall. Or rather, it hits Goketsu's leg. Garo's eyes widen in shock as he realizes that his opponent is now behind him. A moment ago, the monster was right in front of him. How did he get around him so fast? Teleportation? No, this guy doesn't seem to have such powers. It's just his physical speed. Sweat drips down Garo's face as he experiences what a top-tier dragon-level monster is like for the first time. How terrifying.
I will admit, your skills far surpass most martial artists I've seen in my lifetime. However, I've seen your master fighting. And he is better than this. Goketsu waters before suddenly kicking Garo in the back. The human monster grunts in pain as he flies forward a few dozen meters before landing on the ground on all fours. Not a moment later, he feels Goketsu's foot stomp down on him and flatten his body. Garo feels several of his bones break and shatter. The giant monster looks down at him. What's the matter? I'm barely stepping on you. Get up within three seconds, or I will crush you. Goketsu says and Garo grits his teeth. This thing, it's mocking him. And that's unacceptable. A glimmer of anger appears in the hero hunter's eyes and he feels a surge of power coursing through his body. Don't you dare mock me! He shouts before suddenly standing up with such force that Goketsu's foot is launched a few meters into the air. The monster's eyes widen. Before he can say anything, Garo dashes out from underneath his leg and jumps at his waist with speed far greater than anything he's shown thus far. Caught off guard, the four-eyed giant can't react in time and Garo delivers a furious blow to his stomach, following it up with more attacks to the abdomen, before Goketsu regains his bearings and launches a hand at him, intending to grab the human monster. However, to Goketsu's surprise, Garo grabs onto one of his fingers and springboards off of it, lunging at the giant's face. A fraction of a second later, the monster martial artist feels a fist collide with his chin and his head is tilted upwards. Right after the punch, Garo raises his legs up to his chest in midair and kicks them both out at Goketsu's chin, delivering a powerful blow and pushing himself away from the monster's face. The hero hunter flips in the air before landing gracefully on his feet. How do you like that, you piece of garbage? Goketsu stumbles back a few steps before regaining his balance and slowly shifting his head downward to look at the hero hunter. To Garo's surprise, he doesn't see any blood or bruising on his face. It's like he never even hit him. What's this? Have you been holding back? No, that doesn't seem to be the case. Did you grow stronger just now? Interesting. It appears you were more of a monster than I originally thought. Damn right I am. Garo smirks, but that smirk soon disappears when Goketsu looks at him unamused. That is unfortunate for you. I won't have to hold back as much now as I did before. Garo's jaw drops. This guy was holding back? No, that can't be. Prepare yourself, boy. Goketsu declares as he takes a fighting stance. Garo gazes upon it and can't spot any openings. That stance is a clear sign of vast martial arts knowledge. Just who is this guy? What did Phoenix men call him when they first arrived? At that moment, a terrifying realization hits the hero hunter. That's right, Goketsu. Now he remembers. The first ever winner of the Super Fight Tournament. A world famous martial artist, not as well known as Silver Fang, but still up there in the big leagues of the fighting community. He was said to have died fighting a monster. Of course, now Garo can see that that wasn't true. Seems he turned into a monster instead somehow. In any case, this is bad news. Not only is this guy powerful, but he is also a master martial artist. Garo gulps and squats down into his own battle stance. Well then, let us begin. Goketsu leaps at the hero hunter at an unbelievable speed. The next thing Garo knows, he's flying through the air and crashing into a tree, shattering it into a million pieces. He gasps in shock. What the hell happened? He didn't even see the monster moving. Before he can think anymore, he sees Goketsu dashing at him again. 
Just barely, Garu is able to kick off the ground and dodge to the side fast enough to avoid the giant's attack. But he is soon hit by a follow-up blow from Goketsu. A massive uppercut to the gut. The monster's fist crashes into Garo's body and rocks his bones, leaving the hero hunter numb. Goketsu then raises one of his fists into the air and sends it crashing down on Garo with enough force to break a few more bones and launch the hero hunter into the ground. Garo coughs up blood as he desperately tries to stand up, but as soon as he's back on his feet, he feels Goketsu's foot collide with his leg and shatter its bones. With one last grunt, Garo falls to the ground. With several broken bones in his arms and legs, he can't move. Goketsu glares down at him. Is that all? How disappointing. For a student of Bang's, you certainly don't live up to his legacy. I plan to face him someday. I wonder what he will say when I present your corpse to him. I say that is not going to happen. Get away from him at once, creature. Garo's eyes widen. Old man? Bang and Bomb step into the forest clearing, causing Goketsu's eyes to widen. He lets out a low, rumbling growl. So, you really did lead heroes to this location after all. At the same time, Phoenix Man lands on the ground on the opposite side of the battlefield, with a few cuts on his wings and limbs. The three ninjas touch down near Goketsu as well. They all have cuts, bruises and other minor injuries on their bodies. Gale looks at Goketsu. Seems you're right. Those bastards really did lead heroes to our location. Hey, it wasn't intentional. So what? It still proves you're incompetent. What did you- Phoenix Man is interrupted when one of his wings suddenly falls to the ground, having been sliced off of his body. One, two, three, four... Five monsters! And the hero hunter! This place is a gold mine. Atomic Samurai steps out of the shadows behind Phoenix Man, who grunts in pain and turns to face the new threat. Atomic Samurai. I've been looking to settle the score with you. The two warriors stare each other down. At the same time, Bang looks at Goketsu. Something about him seems familiar. That hair. Bang's eyes narrow, and Goketsu notices it. Do you recognize me by any chance? I am not entirely sure to tell you the truth. Something about you is definitely familiar, but I don't think we've ever met before. No, we have not. But my name should ring a bell. I am Goketsu. Goketsu? What happened to you? You seemed like such a promising young man back in the day. I even considered approaching you to offer a place at my dojo. But then I heard you had died. What really happened? Goketsu scoffs. How nice of you. Well, I suppose telling you won't hurt. I did indeed face off against a powerful monster and was defeated. However, instead of killing me, he offered the chance to become a monster myself. And I took it. Bang's eyes narrow. The possibility of there being a monster who can turn others into monsters is certainly worrying. Unbeknownst to him, that threat has already been handled long ago. Is that so? Did he force you, or did you do it of your own free will? Free will. I see. Then it's a good thing I did not have the chance to teach you. You were rotten from the start. Harsh words for someone who can't seem to keep his own students from going rogue and trying to imitate monster behavior. Goketsu motions at Garo, who's still lying on the ground in front of him. 
Bang does not respond. In any case, I have always wanted to face you in battle. Let us see whose methods are more effective. Your training, or my monsterization. Goketsu takes his fighting stance. Bang responds by taking off his shirt and entering a battle stance of his own. Come!